Okay, finally, we are going to move past graphs and we are finally going to get to real physics using real formulas. So in this lesson, I want to go through the kinematics formulas I'm going to use when acceleration is constant. Okay, not when acceleration is changing, just when acceleration is constant. And since I love formulas and I love math, I'm going to derive them all for you. So you can kind of get an idea of where all of these formulas come from to see that they're not exactly just made up. They're all built around our fundamental variables, our fundamental units, and we use different formulas according to the different information that we are given, whether we're given time, whether we're given displacement, distance, and position, or whether we're given speed or velocity. First, let's take a look at the ones that we just kind of need to know. We kind of need to know that V is going to be equal to some distance over time. And that's kind of like, a, because meters per second, that's, that's got to be a dead giveaway for speed. All right. So you're not going to see this on an AP formula sheet. You might see it in honors or in a regents level here in New York, but generally you are not going to see this formula. You need to understand that V is going to be x over t, change of position over t. You might also see this as v equals d. Some people use d for distance of displacement. Here in the AP level, we use x for position. Another formula that we kind of need to know without being told is that a is going to be a change in velocity or speed over time. And this is that meters per second per second. All right. And so we have A equals some number four meters per second squared. This formula, once again, in some classes, you'll be given, it will be given to you on your reference table, but on the AP level, it is not. But this formula right here begins the journey to our kinematics formulas. And what we're going to see is we're going to see a simple form of formulas, and we're going to see a long form. And here's what I mean. When I see this, there is a variable here that is not in its simplest form. We know that delta V is really V final minus V initial, right? You might see this as a subscript F, as a subscript I, but an AP, this would be your definition for V uh, change in V. So I can rewrite this now as saying A equals V final, minus the initial over t and this will give us some sort of expression that we can see for this v final and it's going to be one of the first kinematic formulas that we're going to use and it's going to say that v final is going to be equal to v initial plus a t and for those of you who are not sure how i did this i brought this t up here and i made a t equals v minus v naught and then all I did was bring V naught over here. So I got V equals V naught plus A T. So I'm gonna call this just for reference formula one that we're gonna see. And I'm gonna use this when I derive other formulas. So this is kind of how we're gonna find V final. Now, if we wanna find displacement, We can look back at one of those simple formulas where displacement is some sort of change in x over t, but this change in x over t, this can be written out as average v again. Sorry, this should have got an average. Sometimes they put a bar over it, where we have x minus x naught, all right, over t, or we can express V average as V1 plus V2 over two, right? That's that. So if I want to take this formula right here, I can now make a derivation V initial plus V final over two is really equal to delta X over T. And if I want to pull this one half out and make it a little bit neater, times t, that's going to equal delta x. So now I've used a very basic, simple average formula to come up with my second kinematics formula to find displacement.
when I know initial, final, time, and distance. So if we start writing down the variables, right? If we look at our key variables, the ones that we learned for kinematics, that's going to be helpful. In every single case, there's going to be some sort of X, there's going to be some sort of T, there's going to be some sort of V, and there's going to be some sort of A. Start to look for these in word problems. And when you start to look for these in word problems, then you are going to find the formula that has the most in there. And we, how do we find these in formulas? Once again, from the beginning of the year, we are going to use their units. This is where units, when we're reading, and we see a number that's three meters per second, we know that we've been given V. So we're going to get into a really good habit of trying to identify these kinematic uh, variables. So this is if we know VF, we know T, we know displacement. These are a lot of things to know, but what happens when, if say we don't know VF? So now we have to use some of our simple formulas and we have to try and derive another formula from that. Well, let's look at that formula we just had. We just had this, which equaled one half V naught, uh, plus VF delta T. Now I said we don't know this, but we just saw a second ago that VF is equal to V naught plus A T. So now let's take this and substitute it in for VF. And I'll change the color so you can see exactly what I substituted. And then this T was already here. So now I just want to clean up these two V naughts real quick and just make this one half times two V naught plus A T. And there's still this T out here. Now this T needs to be distributed in, right? So now I have a, a case where I'm at one half times two V naught T plus A T squared. I just squared them where these go away and we get probably the greatest kinematics formula there possibly is, V naught T plus uh, one half A T squared, where this one half, this should have been parentheses here, students, I'm sorry. This one half would have canceled out that two and the other half would have shot over to here. Delta X. So we see that displacement equals V naught T plus one half a t squared. This one, which I'll call formula three, it's, it's so good. You're gonna use this so much this year. Really, really get ready to use that one often. The last, another scenario variable we don't know, what if we don't know time? All right, so just to recap, this is basic stuff. This is if you know everything. This is if you don't know VF. This is if you don't know time. So you can come back and look at these and say, I don't know time. What was that formula I had to do? All right. So from the acceleration formula, right? A equals V final minus V naught over T. If I don't know time, I'm going to want to substitute time into one of those other formulas. So let's reword this as T equals V final minus V naught over A. Right, I just converted that. So now we have to see where can I plug this in to get rid of T in one of these formulas that we've already learned, right, to help us out. But I don't know T, so I can plug it in here. I can try and plug it in right here. Let's see which one it was gonna work best in. The one I'm gonna choose is not this one, because there's squares, there's a bunch of T's. I don't want to be substituting in this whole mess there. So I'm going to see what happens when I substitute it just right here. So I'm going to rewrite this formula again as delta X equals one half V naught plus V times T, right? This is from before. All right, so now let's take this and I'll convert it over to red again so you can see what I did. 
and substitute it in, eliminating time. So I just took this and I shoved it in right there for T and I got that equation right there. If I clean this up a whole bunch, I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this out of the bottom and this out of the bottom, right? So I'm gonna move this up, multiply everything by two and everything by A. So what I'm gonna get over here is I'm gonna get two A X. That's gonna get rid of this two and that's gonna get rid of that A. Then I'm gonna be left with um, a V naught plus V times a V final minus V I. All right, and look, now there's no time. All right, and after I clean this up even a little bit, I wanna get VF by itself. I'll see that VF squared equals VI squared plus two A times displacement. All right, so if I summarize all those, like I said, for those that don't need the derivations, for those of you that don't need the derivations, you can just look here. And if you're an AP, I'll tell you the ones that are gonna be on the AP. But here's all the formulas we have right now. So here's not on the AP one. V average equals some displacement over T and also A is delta V over T. You're not gonna see those, you need to know, okay? But we can manipulate this one, all right, to know that V equals V naught plus AT. That's a big one, all right? We will definitely, like I said, over and over again, use this one, V naught T plus one half A T squared and we will use VF squared equals V naught squared plus two A displacement. All right, so, and like I said, the real quick tip, this is if we don't know VF, this is if we don't know time, and these are all assuming that A is constant. Right? When A is changing and things like that, that's going to be a little bit more in dynamics. That's going to be a little bit down the line. I'm going to give you a worksheet right now. You guys can try this out. But anything with kinematics, these five formulas are going to get you there. So if you're not in AP Physics 1, if you're on a regular course, you might see this just listed as V equals D over T. You might see this called uh, D equals VIT plus one half. A T squared, just the different names for these. And, and also too, on an AP, this VF is not gonna be here. That's just gonna be V squared. On a regular course, it might say this. All right, that's pretty much it. Subscribe if you'd like some more tips on physics. If you are not in my class, if you have any questions, leave them down below. It's Friday for those watching in my class. I'll see you guys on Monday.